Our next case involves a 20-ish year old female with a history of IV drug use who's presenting now with shortness of breath, fatigue, and diffuse body pains. Her vitals at triage are a pulse of 134, respirations of 25, blood pressure of 76 over 42, setting 87% on room air, and she's afebrile. Clearly she is sick, so you decide to do a point of care echo. We will start with the parasternal long axis view. Notice that it is slightly overgained, but still we'll look for three different things, including pericardial effusion, left ventricular ejection fraction, and RV dilation. There is a trivial pericardial effusion present right here. The left ventricular ejection fraction is normal, as evidenced by the fact that there is good fractional shortening of the left ventricle, and that the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is touching the septum. And finally, we'll notice that the RV does not look excessively enlarged based on the rule of thirds where the RV is approximately the same size as the outflow tract and the LA. Next, we'll move on to an infrequently obtained view in point of care echo. This is called the RV inflow view. And what happens is you take your parasternal long axis view and tilt the tail of the probe to the patient's left shoulder so you get a more anterior view of the heart. And remember, the RV is more anterior of a chamber. And so therefore, you'll notice that this is the RV, this is the RA, and this is the tricuspid valve. And you'll notice that there is an abnormality of the tricuspid valve here. I have frozen the clip to identify a mobile mass that is located on the tricuspid valve that measures 2.6 by 1.2 centimeters. I have now placed color flow Doppler across the tricuspid valve. You'll notice that there are bright colors on both sides of the valve, indicating high velocity blood flow. This brings up the concept of aliasing, where the blood flow is so quick that the ultrasound machine cannot determine the direction of blood flow. This brings up another important concept called the vena contracta. The vena contracta is the point at where the regurgitant jet is the narrowest and the fluid velocity is at its maximum. The wider the vena contracta, the worse the regurgitation. You'll notice it is nearly impossible to measure the vena contracta here because the tricuspid regurgitation is severe. I have now placed continuous wave Doppler through the expected area of the vena contracta, and this is my recording. The baseline is here, so all blood flow moving away from the probe is gonna be a negative deflection. Notice that the packets here are very dense. They're early peaking and in triangular in appearance. This is consistent with severe tricuspid regurgitation. An important point is that the maximum velocity here is not related to tricuspid regurgitation severity. This is a marker of right ventricular systolic pressure, which we will discuss at a later video. We have now obtained a parasternal short axis view. Unfortunately, the probe is moving a bit while the view is obtained. But you'll notice as we move from a basilar to an apical view that there is flattening of the inner ventricular septum. It is hard to tell which part of the cardiac cycle it is present, but this is, goes along with an RV volume overload. We'll now move on to the apical four-chamber view of the heart and focus on the tricuspid valve. Here we see the previous vegetation. Vegetations are typically irregularly shaped, mobile, causing regurgitation, and are typically found on the low pressure side of the valve. This is an important concept. Typically, when you're looking at a vegetation, it should be seen on the low pressure side, also known as the upstream side. So if you're worried about the tricuspid valve, it would be found on the right atrial side of the valve. We again place color flow Doppler over the tricuspid valve and we see aliasing, indicating high velocity blood flow and a vena contracta that is so wide I cannot measure it. We finally move on to the IVC and notice that it is plethoric and does not vary with respiration as we expect from severe tricuspid regurgitation. I will show the most important view again, the RV inflow view. And to summarize her findings, she has an irregular mobile mass attached to the tricuspid valve found on the right atrial side that is causing severe tricuspid regurgitation. She has a history of IV drug use. This is consistent with tricuspid valve endocarditis. She was seen by cardiac surgery, determined not to be a surgical candidate, and despite optimal treatment, she developed multi-organ dysfunction syndrome and died within a week of presentation. I'll summarize the three most important points of this case. Vegetations are irregularly shaped, mobile, oscillating masses that cause regurgitations and are typically found on the low pressure side of the valve, also known as the upstream side. So for the tricuspid valve, it will be seen on the right atrial side. The RV inflow view is important. From the parasternal long axis view, 
tilt the tail of the probe to the patient's left shoulder to bring out the RV inflow. And finally, tricuspid regurgitation velocity does not relate to TR severity. If you have severe tricuspid regurgitation, you're going to notice that the Doppler signal is dense, triangular, early peaking, and you'll see a wide vena contracta. Whereas if you have elevated right ventricular systolic pressure, you actually use the maximum velocity of the TR jet to calculate the RVSP using the modified Bernoulli equation, which we will discuss in a future case.